Hi everyone, good morning, good evening, you know, depending on your time zone. This is the Adobe Live show. We'll be live for three days and this week it's all about editorial design. And uh, we are welcoming Rachel. Hello. Hello. And Javier. Hello. Yeah. Oh, how are you today? Feeling good? Yes, feeling good. Excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So maybe you you recognize uh, Javier. You were a guest of Adobe Live, I think, uh, one year ago. We were trying to remember. Yeah, almost uh, a year ago. Yeah. yeah, and you did some uh, packaging for us. Uh, if you want to watch the replay, it was amazing. Uh, maybe we can quickly uh, switch to the host computer. Uh, if you check uh, the Behance account of Javier, you will see the Eclipse Coffee. This is yeah. how you have to pronounce it, right? It's yeah, Eclipse. <laughs> yeah. eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> so we created this packaging here um, on the show. So yeah, check it out. And uh, yeah, so it was a, an amazing experience and uh, Javier is based in San Francisco and we try to have more hosts uh, from the community, from the creative community. So uh, it will be your first uh, hosting experience. Yeah, so, yeah, it should be fun. We'll be watching Rachel creating some amazing stuff. Yeah, you don't have to work this week. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's much easier for me. <laughs> that will be easy. Uh, so yeah, so I will just uh, uh, be around uh, during this episode just to uh, help uh, Javier a little bit. and. Uh, Let's uh, start with, oh, giving some shout outs, you see. So, uh, Sander is here, um, and uh, Sander say you, you want to be uh, on the live show once. Okay, so <laughs> we have an Adobe Live Behance account, so make sure to send us a message and say, hey, check my portfolio, and if we like your work, yeah, we will definitely invite you. We have uh, Lauren watching. Yeah. We're live from San Francisco, let's know where you are. We have people from Harlem in New York, this is Germany. great. Germany. Yeah, Germany. Very and cool. we have uh, John Perry. Welcome, John. First time viewer. We are live every week, so welcome uh, to the Adobe Live show. Uh, maybe we can explain what will be going on this week and uh, share uh, the schedule with you. So uh, this week on Adobe Live, uh, we start uh, the day with uh, Rachel. We'll be live with Rachel for two hours every day, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, then we welcome Stephanie uh, Bruckler. And finally, Lucas. Uh, we, he will be... Uh, um, a show hosted by Michael Jarrett. Uh, so three shows today, six hours, and it will be the same tomorrow on Wednesday and on Thursday. And uh, what will happen during these shows is that not only you will be doing live creations, but we want you to create also and share design. So on the first day today, a daily challenge. Uh, it's about, uh, yeah, we will share the details. Tomorrow also a daily challenge, but on day three, make sure to come back on Thursday because you can share your portfolio and uh, have your portfolio reviewed by Rachel and uh, Javier. So it's a unique opportunity to have uh, feedback from uh, creative professionals. Uh, today, the challenge, make sure to check the challenge tab. It's about uh, summer recipe. I think uh, you, we share with you a template uh, and so you don't start from scratch. And just to say about summer and a recipe is a very specific format, you know, mm -hmm. where you have to, um, you know, what is the structure for a recipe? How would you describe it? Uh, you have the ingredients, that's it. Ingredients mm -hmm. and uh, steps. The steps, yeah. process. Yeah. And for those that are new to the to this, the challenge, there's a little challenge tab above the chat mm -hmm. that you can check all the instructions and how to submit and all that. So be sure to check that out. And there's a prize for it as well. Yeah, um, so uh, the price uh, is a Creative Cloud subscription. So for one year. Yeah, so at the end of the show, we will review what you create, all these recipes. We'll be super hungry, like we'll be, uh, <laughs> uh, it has to be very tasty. And uh, we'll ask Rachel, okay, which one do you want to reward? Uh, which designer do you want to motivate and encourage with a one year Creative Cloud subscription to be even more creative? So it will take really uh, maybe uh, five minutes. So if it's the first time you're watching the show, make sure to check the change tab. Just create and share your design for five minutes within design, and uh, yeah, uh, you get a chance to win a credit card subscription. And uh, stay tuned because also at some point we will do uh, something called Chat and Win, where we encourage you to chat. So make sure to be active in the chat because we will give away uh, something new. First time we are giving this away, it's uh, a pin, uh, and uh, it's uh, a pun pin, I would say. It's a whole crop, you see, in design. So it looks uh, <laughs> it looks like a gigantic poster, but it's just a pin. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> just like this. Uh, oh crap! You know we like puns on Adobe yeah, Live, so that's uh, I think it's a good one, <laughs> an official one by the uh, the Adobe InDesign team. Okay, awesome. So um, 
I will uh, yeah. give you a uh, stage with Rachel, okay? Maybe uh, talk a little, bit, a little bit about her work and what she wants to create today. And uh, yeah, and, uh, I will come back for the chat and win, okay? Because there are some fireworks to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful. Okay, see you soon. All right, so Hi. again, I'm Javier. We have Rachel today with us. Yes, uh, hello. She's going to be creating a scene, I believe. And do you want to give us a bit of background on, on yourself? Sure. So I actually am newly moved to New York City. I've been there a little bit less than a month, but before New York, I was at a studio in Kansas City called Design Ranch for four years, where I got to make some really really great projects and work with some really great people and really talented designers. So a lot of what you see in my portfolio is from that studio. Yeah, and should we, do you want to show in, uh, uh, one of these sure. projects? Uh, uh, maybe you can just click on that one. Let's see, I jump on my screen. Yeah, so this was an invitation that we got to do for the Museum of Art at KU, it's the Spencer Museum. And I actually interned there while I was in school, so it was really cool working on this project from a professional angle. And so they had done all these multi-million dollar renovations to the museum and they were having this big reopening gala and they called it Lux Naturalis because it was the first time natural light was being introduced to the museum. So we kind of thought maybe the, the print process and the paper could highlight this idea of light being introduced and seeing something new and seeing something in a different light. So we used a clear holographic foil on the invitation. So awesome. depending on the light, you know, sometimes you see the full rainbow, sometimes it's just the cool tones, and then kind of this, these other series of typographic tricks, so mm -hmm. the white on vellum. I, I see a lot of um, like very typographic uh, look and feels in your stuff. Yeah. Is that the, what you like creating? Yeah, I would definitely say that I gravitate towards that. Okay. I like working with type, I like words. Awesome. So, yeah, that's what I naturally gravitate towards. Okay, do much. Should we click on another one sure. of these just quickly? Yeah, so this was for an IT company, and this was a brand um, identity and full-on logo and logo system. So this was Sidekick Solutions, and you can see the typographic, the word mark kind of plays off the icon, which is kind of the sidekick, but also a connection and also an S when you flip it. Kind of this idea that when your customers are happy, they're happy. Cool. So we got to do some cool iconography and just pulling some Buttons. icons off the computer, so the mouse and the hazard sign, but kind of keeping this nice, clean, techy feel. Awesome, so all this work is from that previous studio? That yes, you yeah, at? so this was all produced at Design Ranch. Awesome. Yeah, in Kansas City. Okay, so uh, I think we can jump into what you're gonna do today. I believe you have an outline of what you're gonna yeah. be doing. Yeah. So do you wanna share that screen? Or sure, sure. So I just kind of put together a rough idea of what we will be doing the next three days. Um, but basically what this will be is a typographic zine. So in 2017, I decided to just keep a documentation and write something every day, so kind of a, a daily challenge, but something that wasn't necessarily design related, something that was creative in a different sense. So I guess you could call it a journal, but it was also just more of a challenge to write something every day. It could be anything, it could be what I did or something I saw. So kind of taking that and putting all of that content into a printed little tangible piece is what we will be doing. Awesome. So it will be very typographic. Um, and yeah, just kind of experimenting with type and. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I, I saw some of her writing. She has a lot of content to fit in a the lot scene. Of content, so it yes. should be interesting to watch and, and see this being created. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a, lot, a few chatters here. William says he's loving it. Um, good morning. Everyone, start chatting. Uh, where are you guys from? <laughs> Nadia says hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, we can, um, I guess we can start jumping into um, some of your early sketches. Or yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, or inspiration, did you share? Yeah, so I thought I would kind of walk through some of what I did to prepare for this first because I have 
taken some time the last few days to really just kind of set the tone for what I want this to be and how I want it to look. So I thought I would share some of that just so you guys know I'm not just jumping right into this. There was some thought awesome. behind it. Um, so yeah, so what I've kind of done to prepare is usually when I start a project, I will start with a list of words. And so it's just kind of this stream of consciousness, you know, anything that has to do with what I'm working on or something that would describe the way that I want it to look or feel. And sometimes, you know, you find when you're typing out these words, it will produce some sort of visual and that, and then can be translated to the design. So uh, I just thought I would kind of show you this prompt. So this is kind of the idea of the daily writings 2017 and the final piece will be this typographic zine. And it's really just to kind of document these writings that I did and then just turn it into a tangible piece, something that doesn't just live on the computer. And it's all just personal things that you were going through and like what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not super personal, but it's, yeah, it, it is somewhat personal okay. too, so. Um, awesome. But yeah, more than anything, just a challenge to write something. Yeah. And, you know, have to do something every day. So these were just some words that made sense to me and kind of came to mind when I was talking about it mm -hmm. or trying to design it. So kind of this idea of 365, it's this daily task, but then also kind of looking at a calendar and what what makes a calendar and what is a year. And so I did some research too and just kind of like, you know, did generic searches of calendar and year. So that kind of cool. produced just some more visuals and words. So yeah, I've got in here just like day, week, month, quarter, year, 365, and it's now, also- Is there any particular well, word from this list that inspired uh, like what you're gonna do, or is it all just kind of- um, It's kind of a hodgepodge of things, I would okay. say. I mean, all of them relate to it in some way, but yeah, there are probably words. So it's gonna be typographic. That's yeah, it's so like typographic, <laughs> 365, okay. awesome. writings, journal. Those would be some of the key words. Okay. Hello from Colombia, Sebastian. Um, Hi, Claire. <laughs> Claire says hello. <clears throat> hello, guys. So yeah. Um, okay, so then back to this kind of what I've what I've done already to prepare for this. So then I kind of like to pull a visual tone, and like I said, research. So I just Google calendar and year. Um, so some of this visual tone. These were just a few images. Um, so kind of taking this idea of a traditional calendar and what that looks like. It's very gridded, seven columns, usually organized by month. Um, and then this would just, this is a stended calendar. So just kind of like a modern interpretation of a calendar. And then just these typographic layouts and lots of content, but also having fun with typography and different shapes and forms. Um, I liked just the graphic nature of the circle that one year is one orbit around the sun, and so maybe introducing circles to the design. That's cool. And then kind of just this idea of like a smaller journal, something that feels a little more intimate, personal, but also still a printed piece. So are we? Are you going to create an actual like little calendar, or is it just going to be like a chronological order, like full year? Thing. Yeah, so I'm thinking this will be just like a 16 page small okay. zine and it will be all typographic and it will just be linear. So kind of going through the year and trying to get all of the content in there, but then also pulling out highlights mm -hmm. that happened or a quote or something I saw that day. And no photography, I believe. Right? And no photography, yeah. Okay. So this will be purely typographic. Um, cool. Yeah, so kind of just a challenge to hierarchy and using the grid. Um, okay. So this is all of the content. <laughs> Looks so intense. there is a lot. Uh, there are 60 pages in my Google Doc by the end of the year. So you can see what I've done before coming here because it would have taken me way too long. I've gone through and just kind of started formatting the text. So. I set all the dates up the same, added the day of the year, the, or the day of the week, and then the city that I was in that day. And I just kind of 
I've started by putting it in seven columns just to kind of play off the idea that there are seven columns in a calendar, but that may change throughout the zine. And I've decided to do all of the content at three point size type. So it's, it's there if you want to read it, but it's not necessarily for the entire mm -hmm. thing to be read, but yeah. And you're going to be pulling out interesting words from that. Yeah, yeah. So highlighting different way. things throughout the year. Yeah, exactly. So I've gone through and put all of this type into the document. So those are, <laughs> this is all of the content. And then this was just kind of a quick timeline. So these might be some things that I pull out. Um, another thing that I've done is kind of added these circles here on eventful days. So that will be seen just like a subtle detail. And then I've also gone through and pulled out specific days or quotes, things that I like that could be used, pulled out. So this is all yeah. the content. Hi, Ryan. And Yadira is asking, do you use character or paragraph styling in your? Um, yeah. So. In the content, so I went ahead and just justified everything because, I don't know, it just felt cleaner and I think it also allows more type to fit in there. And then, um, yeah, I'll just. So I've, I've done the dates, just the day and then the month, which I think is the European style of doing it, just makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. And then just nice M dash and then just the day and then a comma. Awesome. Um, and then I've also done 0.125 inch for these gutters here. But like I said, it might not look exactly like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this you is know, just it, this, it, the type the will content. look like this, but it might not be seven columns mm -hmm. the whole time. Cool. And do you have any idea what size this thing is going to be yet? Yeah. So. Oh. Um, here I can, let's go ahead and start setting up this document. So oh, I so have, start working. yeah, here we go. We'll just jump into this. So usually switch this to inches and then I've decided that this will be four by six. So it's about the size of a postcard. So four by six. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I liked this size cause it just felt almost like a little journal that you could keep in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Like I said, kind of a little bit more of this intimate feel. Um, so let's go back in here. So then we'll add bleed since this will eventually be a printed piece. Greetings from Brazil, Bruna. Facing pages. And then we're gonna do 16 pages because this will eventually be saddle stitched. Okay. And so it needs yeah, to be big. divisible by four. Awesome. Um, Do you starting? intend to like mix it in with different color papers or you want to do all white? Or you have um, I think I'll probably just print it on like a cheap white paper. Okay. So just like a, like a lighter stock, one that you might be able to even like see the type through okay. a little bit when you hold up to the light. Um, I don't know if you were, if we were really balling out, we could do some cool print technique tricks, mm -hmm. embossing I mean, you the foils, throw in like a foil, neon, color paper here yeah, and there. And color just, paper, yeah. yeah, all kinds of tricks. But cool. um, I think for this, we're just gonna keep it kind of raw and simple. And the intent is to print it at some point, hopefully, yes. right? Yes, cool. the intent is to print it. Um, okay, so, number of pages. So 16 pages, start page one. <laughs> Fanny oh. says, uh, I'd love to see when they open for the first time a blank document. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the um, we'll start. Yeah. That's always the hardest part for me. Yeah. Like, like just opening something and like, what am I going to yeah, do? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So for this, um, usually it defaults on 0.5 inch margins, but I'm going to go a little bit smaller since the book itself is smaller. And then I think at least to start, why is this showing up as a single page? Do you see that? Uh, you probably have to edit it on the, wait, what's showing up as a single well, page? Well, the master, usually it shows it as a spread. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, start or open it or do a new master maybe? Or 
do yeah do no, neo master yep yeah, up there master up above that just neo master okay yeah and then you can just number of pages do two okay yeah. okay there we go technical difficulties uh, yeah just delete the other ones okay so go into our master pages here you just highlight both of those page icons. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna take the margins so, to 0.25. Yep. And then on the inside, I'm gonna make it 0.5 to allow for some page numbers okay, to eventually cool. go in here. So um, Sandesh is asking what we're doing. We are, uh, this is an editorial um, show and Rachel here is starting a blank document. She's setting up um, her master pages. Um, she's gonna fit in a bunch of uh, writings from uh, a whole year of thoughts and things yeah. that happened to her. Just, yeah, a daily writing exercise. So in 2017, I wrote something every day and we're just making a small typographic zine to house all of that And content. she has all the content written and, and edited, uh, formatted. So we're just starting with a blank document right now. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and Save this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'm going to set up guides. So I think to start, I will do six columns to just allow for some flexibility. And then I usually fit it to the margin. It's not necessarily the right way of doing it. It's just mm -hmm. what I prefer. And then I'm gonna take the gutter down to 0.125, which is what I had in those columns. And then rows, we'll just do also six of those are, let's do, we'll do eight. Somebody's asking if you use inches or pikers. Or? Um, I'm using inches for this because that is the what size I, of well, the, yeah, yeah. What I use. So she's doing a postcard size, um, four by? Four by six. Four by six. 16 pages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we kind of have our master guides here. And this, you know, just allows for some flexibility with alignment down the road and, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't necessarily So I believe this is gonna to be, be more uh, experimental and typographic and Yes, yeah, so the idea is to kind of, it's more about the process and kind of experimenting with type and words. Awesome. Um, since this isn't for a client, we have Somebody some more says this is a micro scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I like that. Uh, okay, so, pages. All right, so we have, our grid and our document set up now. Yeah, and for, for those who are just joining, remember there's a challenge going on. On the chat, you can check out the little challenge tab on the right with the instructions and, and how to submit. And I, I believe uh, an hour and a half into the show, we'll select the winner and they will get a full year subscription for Creative Cloud. Very exciting. Okay, so then I'm gonna kind of jump down to oh, yeah. some type and color choices. So I think at the beginning of a project, for me at least, I kind of like to start with like laying out some boundaries for myself and some restrictions. So in this case, it's going to be 16 pages, four by six, mm -hmm. and it's going to be purely typographic. So to keep it interesting, I've kind of gone ahead and picked three different typefaces that I feel work well together. Mm -hmm. Um, so the main type that we'll be using is this neural grotesque and it would be for the copy for the copy. Yeah. Um, I always gravitate towards grotesques. I just like the personality, but also the timelessness of them and using a sans serif grotesque for the bulk of the copy, I think is nice because it's a style that looks, that works well at large sizes and small sizes. So that's kind of why we're using that for the bulk of the project and then kind of complementing it with this more decorative 
serif, mm-hmm. and then bringing in this expanded for little details throughout. So titles and yeah, or like page numbers and all that. And is there any particular reason why you chose this typefaces? Or yeah, so like I said, with the grotesque, I feel like it works well at large and small sizes, and just feels timeless. Mm-hmm. It's kind of rooted in a lot of. Have you used this typefaces before? Are they your favorites? Or? Um, yeah, okay, so I have a, usually I have a general pool of typefaces that okay. I always kind of go towards, but I've actually never used any of these. All right. So that was another reason, was to kind of try something new. Um, and then I have a couple type sources that I thought I would share. Um, so Fonts and Use is a really good resource, just shows not only nice, yeah. Fonts and typefaces, but also shows them applied. So you mm-hmm. kind of get a sense of how it could really work in a layout or in real life. Um, so that is one that I would recommend. Yeah, this is a good site. And then I have a list of foundries that I always follow. So I kind of just try to keep, keep on top of the foundries posting new typefaces and just kind of keep them on the radar. So this is Colophon. They cool. have... All fun. Yeah. Um, this is just their homepage of typefaces, but mm-hmm. yeah, there's some nice ones on there. And then Grilly Type. So this is where. Those are usually your top picks, those um, foundries? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, cool. I think they have nice work. Yeah, they do. Um, so yeah, the expanded one that we're using today is GT America. And we're using the expanded version. Cool. And uh, one thing that's cool about the Grilly Type is you can do free trials. So that allows you to just download a portion of the typeface and kind of work with it before purchasing it, which is cool. nice. And then Swiss Typefaces, this is just another one. Um, this is the Serif that we will be using cool. from them. So it's this Sang Blue All right. Empire. Alejandro says hi. You, your your Behance portfolio is beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, so these are kind of the three typefaces. I also <laughs> think since, like I said, since we're only using typography, it's nice to kind of have this small library, but also creates limitations for us in that we are only using those three typefaces. So oh. that's kind of a challenge in itself. Um, but another, another reason that the expanded is nice, and I looked at some condensed typefaces as well, but the expanded or condensed just gives you a different shape mm-hmm. of type yeah, to complement totally. the grotesque and the serif. So those were kind of some reasons I chose those. And then I thought it would be nice to introduce some color as well to kind of once again keep it interesting since mm-hmm. there will be no images. So these are colors that I pulled from Images I found that I liked, or just yeah. Other. Were they related to the seasons? Were you did you mention something like yes. that? Yes. So another reason I chose these four. So I kind of decided that I wanted to break up the content into fours. So by organize the content season. by season. Okay. So the blue will represent winter. This kind of pink, flushy color will be spring. Actually. And then red for summer, and then this kind of muddied green for fall. So these are kind of, yeah, the library of assets for this. Cool. Teresa says, Colophon is a great asset. I didn't know. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Typekit has come in handy lately. Have you ever used Typekit for Adobe? I am actually not super familiar with it. I kind of forced myself to use typefaces yeah. that I never used last time okay. too, and I actually forced myself to use like two or, or like typefaces from Typekit. Okay, so it was fun to. It was good. You liked yeah. it. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. Um, okay, so we're just gonna jump into this. So, oh, the fireworks. Oh, we have fireworks. I believe that means chat and win. So yeah, make sure to start chatting and um, we'll give you a little uh, giveaway. Um, where are you guys from? Start, um, hello, Nadia. Okay. We'll play a short video introduction.
Hey, so hey from Seattle. Wow, well, a lot of people. Monterrey, Mexico, um, Arbata, Colorado, Washington, France. Hello, everybody. Romania, cool. Oh my gosh. Wow, well, a lot of Lots people of in the people. chat. Very cool. Hello, guys. Yeah, there's a little giveaway. We have a little pin, um, a little Adobe uh, pun pin. <laughs> Okrop. Okrop. Um, hello from Spain, Orlando, Athens, uh, UK, France. Hello, guys. Hi, Max. Hi, Beth. Ohio. Cool. Yep, we have a Wind. lot of people in the chat. Oh yeah, this is this is a little giveaway. Pretty cool. <laughs> Make sure to start chatting now. Uh, we have a few moments here to enter this giveaway. Hello from Brazil. Hello from uh, Costa Rica. Wow, we have a lot of people. Cool. Girl, <laughs> crop it like it's hot. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Cool. Okay, we have a winner. Anna Nelson is our winner. Congrats. Congratulations. Congrats. We'll be doing this every day, so make sure, yeah, start chatting. It's about 30 minutes into the show, so, yep, there'll be more giveaways. Teresa from Madrid. Hello. All right, from so. Peru. Cool. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, go ahead. So we are now in the document. Um, I thought I would share. I've kind of gone ahead and done some quick cover studies. Awesome. So I thought I would just kind of scroll through those really quick. This is something when I start a project, I generally like to actually start with the cover, which mm -hmm. most yeah, people of so like to save that for the end. the tone a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of, yeah, start messing around with what could this be? What do I want this to be? So using the restraints of the typefaces that we've picked, um, I kind of started going through and you know, maybe it just says Daily Writings 2017, or maybe it's just this huge 365. So just kind of playing with these ideas that are set in place, and mm -hmm. then just kind of moving them around on the layout and kind of seeing what we come up with. So this would be using those colors to break up the seasons. Cool, now when you start a project like this that's very typographic, there's no photography, there's no um, anything like that. What's the, how do you usually start? You just pick your typefaces? Yeah, first? so I think picking the typefaces is really huge. And then, yeah, kind of starting to deset, starting to define kind of this creative territory that you're going to be using. So mm -hmm. for me, it's just getting words onto a document, words that I might be using. So obviously 365, 2017. So you just start playing around with big types, small types, yeah, moving yeah. it around. Yeah, exactly. So just kind of making something huge, making something tiny, okay. rotating. Um, so this was just kind of to get some initial thoughts out and kind of seeing what I liked. And is there, there any particular cover that you're gravitating towards? Um, so I think what I'm going to actually use is a relatively simple one. So something kind of like this. Okay. Um, I liked the idea that it kind of bluntly says what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's 365, which is a nod to the everyday. And then 2017, which was obviously the year that I did it. So, mm -hmm. and then I kind of like this, the simplicity of this as well, because if it were to be an ongoing issue zine, you could easily just change out this, and then this could be, you know, a, okay. what, whatever you want it to be. Awesome. So I think we're gonna go from there, but yeah, these were just some. That's awesome. Quick studies. Yeah, thanks for sharing those. Yeah. And is any of this gonna set the tone for the inside? Do you know yet, or? Yeah. So I think. I kind see of this like big of... and small, and okay. then kind of having movement and just yeah, keeping it kinetic and interesting. Cool. Is something that I would like. All right. To have. So we're just gonna. Start making these. Max says, love the concept. Okay, so I usually like <laughs> to do the optical setting when I know something's gonna be huge. So we're just gonna start by making this really big. Cool. And I'm gonna apply No Master to the cover. 
Fanny says, rotate it, move it, work it. <laughs> this is fantastic, Brandon says. Uh, I'm gonna make this nice and tight. Brandon's asking, what are some tools that you use for typography layout, or do you do you try any and everything? Um, I guess it's just kind of... Yeah, I think it depends on the project a little bit. Um, I mean, the scaling tool is definitely a big one. Mm -hmm. um, you always work with live text? Uh, typically, yeah. Okay. Um, unless it's like a icon or a logo mark of some kind. If you customize a typeface or something like that. Right. So. Um. So this will be yep. 54 minutes set. left to submit your challenge. Yeah, make sure you check out the challenge tab above the chat with all the instructions on how to submit. And Alejandro says, gotta love big type. Of course. Yes. So this is just kind of based off the studies that I've already done, but this will kind of set the tone for the type that you will see throughout the zine. Cool. And yeah, give us a cover. So yeah, I guess the title is kind of like 365, 2017. Awesome, yeah. Julio um, says the approach to typography is quite exquisite. Thank you. Okay, so I am just going to copy and paste the cover into the opening spread. Okay. Um, so this kind of right away will establish a relationship between the cover and the inside of the book. And so then it's kind of, okay, how can we make this different from the cover? So. I'm just gonna start with reversing this out. So, making this page black. Cool, so you're, for those who are just joining, we're creating a scene with daily writings for uh, an entire year. Yes. And we're just getting started um, on an InDesign document, a blank InDesign document. Right, and I've gone through before, and I've kind of, I'm kind of going off these sketches that I have here as well. So there yeah, was so a she's little... created some like rough sketches, um, just small sketches, and then you jump on the the computer from that and just explore more on right. the computer. Yeah, yeah. So lots of like duplicating pages and moving something here mm -hmm. and there, and then just kind of going back afterwards and assessing. Did you ever like for the inside spreads? Did you ever sketch the inside layouts? Uh... Um, for me, I I think sketching is nice for pacing. So mm -hmm. kind of figuring out which content will be where and keeping it not, so it's not, making sure it isn't static. Mm -hmm. So kind of having maybe a spread with really big type and then the next spread is just like filled with a ton of little type and then kind of having these very moments to big. breathe in between. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, okay, so it looks like- Max I'm is asking what shortcuts are you using to increase the font size quickly? in several increments. Okay, so nice little trick. When you are moving any of the increments in InDesign, if you hold down the shift key, that will round it up so that it increases by 10 points instead of one. So, so. you are highlighting the top and then just hitting. Yeah, so you just highlight. I'm gonna put this on typography. So if you highlight the type and then using these arrows here. If you hold shift while clicking those, it will do it at okay. cool. rounded up increments. So right now we are at 140, and then setting that off with some smaller type, which is at 30 point. Okay, cool. So what we've done is kind of taken this cover and then placed it on the inside here, but reversed it so we have a bit of a relationship, but a different relationship, mm -hmm. so it's not too much the same. And then I thought it'd be kind of nice to have a prompt of like what this 
what the zine is about. Mm -hmm. So I think the easiest way to say that is just write something every day in 2017, which was the prompt for this. Awesome. So because it is 30 points on the cover, I think I want this to be smaller. So usually I'll divide it by two or times it by two. So I think for this, we'll do like 18 just to create a nice hierarchy and relationship cool. between the type. And then I'm spacing these all pretty tight. Just, I think that's a nice style Austin for big type. says, Rachel, it's Austin. Hello. Did, did you, launch? you know? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Austin. <laughs> okay, so we got our prompt here. And then I'm just gonna do a little created by. So this is where we are going to introduce that third typeface. <laughs> and this, there's gonna be a lot of tiny type in this zine. So this, I'm just gonna take this down to five point and then just make sure it's nice and spaced out. So we'll do 200. Oh. Is that a rule for you, usually spaced out um, uh, all uppercase? Um, I guess it's just a style, but I think it's nice for mm -hmm. small type, subtitles. Oh, um, looks nice. Things like that, just keeps it clean and mm -hmm. legible. Um, so yeah, this could go a variety of places. Usually I just kind of play around with the grid. So maybe it's something like that. Just kind of a... And then this could be on the same plane as that. Okay, so we have... Once again, this kind of typographic cover that just directly lays out what it is that we're doing, and then the prompt that kind of further explains that. Cool. So. <clears throat> Sophia is asking, how do you know that it's not going to look big or small when you do something for printing? Yes, that is a good question. Um, honestly, the best way if you're printing something is to just print it. Right. And that is really the only way that you will know if it's actually legible mm -hmm. or actually looks nice. So if this were for a client and legibility was extremely important, of course, yeah. Um, I would definitely be printing these and checking just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for my you know, rule is just just play around with things and, mm -hmm. and you know not letting anything any constraints yeah. block you from printing stuff and yeah. then you print it out and you realize it's too small and you just bump it up exactly. a little bit exactly especially in the um, initial stages of a design too i think it's kind of first about getting your ideas out mm -hmm. and kind of getting out sometimes they're bad ideas sometimes they're good ideas yeah. but it's just kind of like getting into the rhythm of a project and kind mm -hmm. of using the restraints that you've given yourself yeah, I think it's 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 very hard to start something from from you know nothing. So when you open a document and you're like you don't know what to do, I, I don't like to get you know blocked or stuck into you know the details. I like to right. play around with things. Right. Yeah, and I think <coughs> starting simple too, and then kind of going back and adding details mm -hmm. is a nice way to do it as well. So you kind of working in layers almost. Yeah. Um, and then one th another that. thing that uh, I would add to this is I, I see you're playing around with a lot of black. Um, I think for a small copy, if you use black, you can still go pretty small. Yeah, uh, very Whether true. you print it on like a laser printer or, you know, offset or whatever. Um, as long as it's a solid color, you should still be able to have some sort of um, legibility in there. Yes, absolutely. And this is an experimental scene, so we yeah, yeah. To... This is very experimental, <laughs> not for a client. So <coughs> we're just having fun. Yeah, this is more about kind of the process and less about the specific perfect outcome. 
Cool. Okay, so something I had started in some of those cover studies was just like laying out every month of the year and kind of having that be a visual introduction mm -hmm. to the zine. Um. Yeah. Minbill also says, okay, experience helps as well. Um, the font size of a business card compared to the size of a text uh, in a book. Yeah, of course, if you already yeah. done this, you know what parameters to you know right. work within. So, you know, like certain typefaces wouldn't read well at certain you know point right. size. So and it also yeah. depends, I think, on who your audience is. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's maybe for a more traditional client and you know their audience is. You know, you don't want the type to be too small or too experimental. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's something more contemporary, then you could get a little funkier with it. Yeah. Since this project is, since I'm the client and the audience on this, this, you know, this is giving me a lot of flexibility to of do course, really yeah. whatever I want, which is the ideal project, I guess. Yeah. And I would also highly encourage uh, everyone to just come up with a project like this and just play around. Because it's one of those things that you that it's hard to, to do for a client. So if you if you set some time to do something yeah. for yourself and just have fun, I think it's really cool. And it's, yeah, it's it's easy to put on the back burner, but yeah. I think sometimes it's nice too, if, even if you, like once again, going back to restrictions and limitations, like maybe you just say, okay, I'm gonna only spend two days and make this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, using that as a prompt to kind of force you to do something like that. So once again here, I'm just kind of getting my content into the book, and then once it's in there, that allows me to kind of experiment more with how it could look, what it could be. Um, so I think it's important too, yeah, to just kind of first get the content in there so you know what pieces you're working with, and then experimenting beyond mm -hmm. that. Um, so once again, I'm just kind of putting playing. in some ideas and kind of playing around with what this could be. So this is kind of that idea I was saying of breaking down the year in different ways. So this is breaking it down by months, obviously, and then maybe for months it goes to seasons. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is hyphenated, so. Yeah, and you also mentioned you might bring in colors for the different seasons. Yes, correct? exactly. So we have the co colors over here. So yeah, Amber, we're, uh, Rachel's creating a scene here from scratch. Um, um, it's kind of a calendar, 365 days of writing. So we're just getting started, set, setting up the tone for the scene. She's got some colors, some typefaces picked, and we're just having fun. Yeah, so once again, these are the typefaces and colors. So these are kind of our li library of assets for this, along with lots of content <laughs> that I wrote over a year. And how did you write this content? Did you have like a document on your phone and just wrote it in Yeah, there, so or? I just did a Google Doc. Okay. And so it automatically saves for me and then I can access it through computer or iPhone. Yeah. And was it just one piece of writing a day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, th I mean basically it was at least one sentence a day. So okay. it wasn't you know, sometimes it was one sentence, one thought, something I saw. Other times it was three paragraphs about the solar eclipse or something okay. that happened that day. <clears throat> so here so I'm just going to offset the sans serif with our kind of more decorative serif. Just kind of introduce some variety. And like I said, I'm just kind of getting the content in there and then playing with it. So this isn't necessarily exactly how it will mm -hmm. be.
Margarita says, Google Docs are so convenient. <laughs> yes. Yes, I use it for a lot of things. I also like to make lists, so it's good mm -hmm. for that. Jean says, I had decided, also kind of represented. So I've also added these colors to my swatches palette. And if this were, you know, going to a real printer, I'd go through and pick out the Pantone mm -hmm. swatches to match each of these colors. Cool. Um, Pantone swatches are really the only way to know how a color will print. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there are a lot of variables. So because these three months are meant to represent winter, I am making them blue. Awesome. And then let's see if we just make these like really huge for now. Hello, Alshen. Hello, Car Carolina. People joining the chat. Are you hyphenating your text? Yes. So yeah. because there is so much of it, I decided that hyphenating mm -hmm. would be fine. And you're using justified. Yeah, and copy. it's fully justified, mm -hmm. hyphenated, so I've made it. Did you play with any settings for your um, paragraphs or, um, or justification? I mean, you can see, so if I decide to have it rag, it just, you know, mm -hmm. it's a little bit less structured. Okay. So. For this, you know, yeah, having that full there. justification felt right, and then allowing it to hyphenate kind of allows for more flexibility, and so there's less rags mm -hmm. or rivers and weird the, things the happening funky, within. Funky things. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, and yeah, like I said, this is three point type, so yeah, very, is. very small. You can only read it if you really, really want to, but that was kind of. My thought with this was mm -hmm. because there is so much of it, you don't really necessarily need to read all of it, just It's more of an pieces. art piece. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's a like lot a of copy to fit also on this scene, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like a texture. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna continue this onto the next spread so mm -hmm. we know what all we have for winter. Yeah, and again, once you get close to printing, uh, you'll you'll do some tests and make sure that if somebody wants to read it, they yeah. can still yeah, exactly. put their magnifying glass and read <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So that is all of the winter type. And we're, we're, is there a reason why you picked a, a, a really tiny scene? Like, why not go, like, super big? Um, so I decided the 4 by 6 because, to me, it just felt almost like something you could have in your pocket okay. or like kind of playing off the idea of a journal okay. and something that could be a little more intimate. Like something you carry with you and you like... Yeah, like, yeah. Cool. Like you're writing in it. Um, and then the 16 pages was once again, since this will probably be saddle stitched in the end when it's printed, which means just stapled down the spine, it has to be divisible by four. Mm -hmm. um, so you have so 16. I just kind of, yeah, so I just kind of laid it on 16 because it didn't seem like too much, but mm -hmm. was enough at the same time. Cool. Um, okay. Cheers from Cincinnati, Ohio. Ooh. John. Skyline Chili. <laughs> Ryan says, ew, hyphens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they're not very desirable. Um, Who reads the fine print anyways? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. OK, 
Okay, so then these were just... When is the project due? The project, we have three days uh, to create this, over two hours a day. So yeah, tune in um, to, uh, tomorrow and Thursday at the same time, and we'll be continuing this, and hopefully we get it to a good point Yes. Uh, by the end of the show. Yes, the so, idea yeah. is to finish it this week. Yeah, so she kind of got a little head start uh, formatting the text and the copy and a little bit of a look and feel. So I think we should be able to finalize it or right. get it to a good point. At yeah, least. yeah. There was a lot of content. So going through beforehand, mm -hmm. just kind of combing through that and doing a little bit of preliminary formatting, I think was useful for this. Cool. Okay, so... Yeah, and there will be a challenge later on, so make sure to check the challenge tab above the chat with all the instructions. We'll be selecting a winner, and they'll get a year subscription of Creative Cloud, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's nice. You maintain a library of your paragraph in character styles? Um, I actually did not use character styles for this, but I mean, it's not a bad idea to do. Um, usually if I'm doing a publication that's really long, I think especially. That, you know, if you already have a publication and you should have all that stuff, yeah, but yeah. starting from scratch for me, it just, I don't know, it, it doesn't make sense if you're right. switching typefaces yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Unless you continue using the same typefaces maybe mm -hmm. it helps to keep your those uh, formatting well and also like we were saying how you know first you're just kind of getting the content yeah. in there and messing around with it and I feel like once you get past those experimental phases yeah exactly then you can go and kind of like really define everything like you said if you in the future you uh, want to do another version of this scene, and maybe it, it yeah. makes sense to keep those. And yeah, absolutely. So next time you use it, it'll be all set and just copy and paste. So this was just something I'd written down that I thought kind of highlighted the idea of winter. So maybe this is something that I would pull out. So you pull this out from some of the copies? Yeah, you wrote, right? yeah. So this is in this copy. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just trying to make um, the pages look a little bit different, more interesting here and there to help the pacing, yeah. correct? Yeah, so mostly what I'm doing right now is getting all the content in there and kind of just initially setting up around, how yeah. it could look or some of the tone but not necessarily making it a concrete thing. Um, so then what I'll probably do with this type is throw it behind. Somebody, so Carla was asking, what's wrong with using hyphens? I don't think there's anything wrong. I, I think, think it's, it's a, a personal preference. Right, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, in, in like justified text, it, it helps a little bit right. with, the, with the rivers and all the spacing issues that it creates, so. Also, I think, like in this instance, when we're working with a whole lot of content, it is nice to have, but if you're working with smaller amounts of content, mm -hmm. you can actually go through and manually edit, edit yeah. everything. Yeah, but that would take you years to yeah, do this. Yeah. <laughs> Another year to exactly. edit this copy. Yeah. <laughs> a year of editing once a day. Yeah. So I'm kind of switching off to just clicking the W. It's kind of this preview. So that just allows me to, you know, I'm working with the grid, but then turning the grid off to kind of see how how these things are shaping out. Mm -hmm. Jason was saying M dash is the way to go, but I don't think that's more for, um, that's too long, I think, for a hyphen. Right. I think uh, that's for quotes and stuff like I that. I did use M dashes. Okay, yeah, to here separate, yeah. I'm also a fan of the long dash. Mm -hmm. That's more of a typographic detail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. So 
So then I'm just gonna kind of go through. Yeah, Ryan Ryan says paragraph and character styling um, catalogs is a heaven sent. <laughs> Save so much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree as well. So this is going to be. What's the most number of typefaces used in one project? Somebody's asking him. Oh. Uh, do you usually limit yourself, or do you, have you ever done something where you're just like, I'm gonna go crazy? Um, I've I've actually never really done anything where I go totally crazy. You probably know more than like three, yeah. five, like maximum maybe. Five, five is a lot. Five is a <laughs> yeah. lot, yeah. Yeah, usually no more than three, if I can help it. Mm-hmm, cool. And like I said, I'm just dividing these by season because to me that just felt like a logical way to break <laughs> up the information. Pam says, I love being here. I had no idea anyone else had a thing for long dashes. <laughs> um, I believe there's a lot of people that oh, love yeah. uh, long dashes and typographic details. So here's autumn. And I've just divided these by the um, when the solstice falls. Mm -hmm. So that spread you were just working on, that is all winter? Yes. So all of the winter type or content. It goes over two spreads? Is, yeah. Okay. So it overflows onto a second spread. And then now I'm going to start placing spring just to once again get the content in there and then kind of going back and I'll okay. mess with pacing and how it all lays out. Okay. So like maybe this one, let me turn it. Yeah, even at three point size, I'm not going to be able to fit all these onto one spread. Yeah, again, we're working on a four by six page layout mm -hmm. with tiny, tiny type. Um, this is not an official publication. It's just an art piece, a uh, side project for Rachel. And she's just having fun creating a little scene out of it. InDesign won't open on my Mac for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear that. We've all been there at some point. Anita says, I don't use hyphens at all. It's good. Sarah's asking if, if you have any favorite sites for probably not free, but trial typefaces that are, um, I get those sites we went through yeah. earlier, sometimes so, have free trials of Yeah, which typefaces. is really nice um, to be able to kind of experiment with the typeface mm -hmm. before. So you had Grilly Type, Colophone Foundry. Yeah. Coll up for their relations of faces like that being created in, in recent years or do you ever use like anything classic? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll use like Helvetica and Accidents, Trade Gothic, Franklin. I mean, yeah, I would say yeah. that I, I like to use a combination of okay. both. Cool. Yeah, because there are definitely some really nice, you know, historical typefaces mm -hmm. um, that still hold up well today. What is um, the weirdest typeface that you use? Like um, funky character. Well, this one is pretty weird. I'm not using yeah. this one today, but this is Sporting Grotesque. Mm -hmm. And I believe this foundry yeah. is all donation based. So, you know, you can kind of pay what you want for mm -hmm. these fonts. Yeah, Sporting Grotesque uh, is pretty But Yeah, this one is super funky. funky. Um, even the, the serif that we're using today yeah. You know, it's it has kind of that traditional foundation, but 
Mm -hmm. It has that some G, elements nice. that kind of add this Sharp some personality. Angles, yeah. yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, a lot of people hate hyphens. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's good if you have uh, less copy and you can edit and yeah. you, you know if you have rag tags you can go and like edit. Right. But if you don't, especially you know. I would say if if it, the type is large, mm -hmm. a hyphen is kind of yeah, an not, eyesore. Yeah, it is. It's not really something that you want to be noticed. John Perry says lost type has some great fonts. Yes, I think they are donation based. Yeah, they're well. also donation based. <laughs> I guess we have a lot of type geeks here, oh, yeah. which is good. That's what we want. We're creating a very typographic scene here. Cool. So now I'm just kind of going back through some entries that I had pulled out to maybe highlight. Um, so like one of them Beyonce is, is Beyonce <laughs> is pregnant with twins. Nice. Um, yeah, maybe you should share some of this, you, you know, if you want to share a few. Um, I see you working through it, feel free. Yeah, so. That was a fun one. <laughs> last winter was kind of, was pretty eventful. Um, obviously there was the inauguration. I actually went out to DC for the Women's March. So that was a huge thing. Cool. Um, I did some traveling. I I added on here the Oscars mishap just because I like watching the Oscars and I thought it was kind cool. of funny how that happened. Um, Do you have a favorite typeface, like all time favorite? Current? Maybe the one that you use the most, or um, I would say it changes, but it's usually a grotesque sans okay. serif. So right now, um, it would probably be Founders Grotesque, okay. which is from the Klim type. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Yep. So this one has. That's the condensed. Kind of like we were saying, some of those grotesque features. Mm -hmm. So the C and then the uh, two-story A here, um, but also has some pretty distinct features. But like I said, with most grotesques, I think they work really well at large and very small sizes. So mm -hmm. I think this one especially does a nice job of that but I'm not using it today because I'm trying to use some typefaces that I haven't haven't used in projects before. Cool. Uh, Amber was asking, what's the short key for grids and previews? Uh, oh, so I think that is just... You hit the... It's just clicking W. Mm -hmm. And then if you click Shift W, it will show you the preview like this. So, mm -hmm. fit to screen. Cool. But yeah, that is definitely a handy one. Actually pull this one up here, I think. So I'm thinking on this spread, I'll pull out like five sentences and kind of have them woven in here somehow. Cool. Um, Brent has 17 minutes to spare. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, the recipe cards. Oh yeah, is that we have a little challenge going on. Uh, make sure to check the tab uh, above the chat. 
There's a little tab that says challenge with all the instructions on how to submit. Uh, we will be picking a winner and they will get a subscription to the Creative Cloud. And I think you still have uh, a few minutes, yeah, 17 minutes actually to, to still submit this. Yes. And Rachel's here just pulling out some pieces of copy for, is this for quotes or? Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of like a pulled quote of mm -hmm. sorts, but mostly it's just a way to, yeah, pull out some sentences that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's gonna pull out things. some interesting uh, pieces from the copy she wrote and play around in an interesting typographic way. Mel fixed in design. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad you got that out of the way. Ryan is asking, is the column in the in the center crease a concern? Um, yes, it probably should be, but once again, because this is more experimental and kind of more of an art piece of sorts. I'm not gonna, not worry. gonna worry about <laughs> it. So. Cool. But yeah, once yeah, again. Yeah, so yeah, she's working with uh, three point types. So obviously that's not gonna be the most legible size, but um, we have a lot of copy to fit and it's more of a, an art piece that we're creating, um, experimental piece that you could still go and read if you want to, but it will be more, this is more of a typographic a project that she's experimenting with. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm just kind of now trying to decide how some of these pulled out sentences could live within this super gridded space. Um, so the Beyonce. <laughs> Gotta get that in there. <laughs> Are you a fan of Beyonce? I am, yes. Cool. Yes. Been listening to the new album. All right. Any fans of Beyonce on the chat? <laughs> I remember too when it was announced that she was having the twins. It was kind of like a nice breath of fresh air in the news, <laughs> you know, it's like amidst a lot of political drama and yeah. election things. Um, this was something else that I pulled out that I remember seeing that I thought was funny was protest is the new brunch. I feel like that kind of sums up cool. some of the things that were happening in January. Pretty well. Yep. That was a weird month. Danielle Ferreira says, no, I'm assuming he's not a fan of Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> no dirty words. <clears throat> so this was you'll, just... you'll be banned if you do any dirty words here in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> Caleb giving a little shout out. If the zine. If the scene so lays flat, the, the column through the gutter should be fine. Exactly. So that's another thing that's nice about a saddle stitch book is that it will, for the most part, lay pretty flat. Um, there's only so many pages you can put in a saddle stitch book. I'm not sure what the maximum would be, but I don't think you would want it to be much more than like 40 or so. So Pam says she rocks. Um, not sure if she means you or <laughs> Beyonce, but one of the two. I'm guessing Beyonce. <laughs> and then Nathan says the new album is fire, though. It sure is. <laughs> Anna says fan is an understatement. Nice. Yeah, she kind of has a cult following. Yeah. Let's 
So then once again, to kind of keep this kinetic and also kind of playing off the idea that, you know, it's sort of a stream of consciousness of sorts, um, kind of creating some movement with the type here. So, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe the months kind of scatter like this. Yeah, do you want to do you want to switch uh, and show everybody uh, the different layouts you've created so far? Um, yeah. Well, here let's just kind of click through Start with the cover what we've inside. done here so far. So yeah, this was kind of based off of some explorations I had done with the cover previously using 365 and 2017 as kind of the foundation for, you know, the title of this that could be an ongoing series. And then just having daily writings kind of living in the middle and that's something that could switch out. And then you open up and we have the cover kind of reversed out with the prompt of write something every day. And we're using those same three typefaces throughout. Exactly, yeah. So limiting ourselves to three typefaces which are represented on this spread. And then also the introduction of these four colors to kind of highlight the change of seasons throughout the year. So this kind of just breaks down, you know, the chapters, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of our first really type heavy spread, getting the texture of all those entries in there. Mm -hmm. And then also just kind of highlighting some things that have happened. So for me last year, it was traveling to Europe, the inauguration, the Women's March, the Oscars, and then traveling to New York. Mm -hmm. And then in the gutters here, I've kind of highlighted other random tidbits. Cool. And the copy text is gonna print over the blue? Correct, Cool. yeah. Yeah, somebody in the chat is saying, as long as you know the rules you should break, the rules once in a while, and we're definitely breaking a lot of rules here yeah. because we are <laughs> just having fun. If this was for a client, probably we would have more restriction and right. Yeah, I mean, and I think there are subtle ways to break the rules. I mean, I think it's probably mm -hmm. good to break the rules yeah. at least in one way with each project. Yeah. Yeah, and he's right. As long of, as you know the rules, there. Yeah. Yeah. You know. They're kind of there. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, from Colorado, says Maya. <laughs> Beyonce or Beyonce? <laughs> All the puns. Beyonce. Somebody's saying, I think Max has 96 pages for saddle stitch. Okay. That's. That would be pretty thick. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Stitch. Yeah, I think it's also nice that we are um, doing a small scene, 16 pages. Also, um, in regards to the column in the middle, we're doing we're just doing 16 pages, and she plans to use uh, very thin paper. Mm -hmm. um, that would also help with the saddle stitch, uh, um, whatever the printing processes where it kind of offsets the, yeah. the gutter a little bit right. or the center. So yeah, yeah you it's get a very the... thin, so again, it's not, you know, a rule that you can break very often, right, but within right. this case, we can have fun and yeah. create an art piece out of it. More about just experimenting with it mm -hmm. and and you don't have kind of to an read. Exercise, you you know, don't have to like, read the whole thing. Yeah, you can exactly. Just enjoy it and yeah. So the first exercise was kind of writing all of this, and now this exercise is kind of how to experiment with it and yeah, how almost like a school project, it? you know, just how do you get it out of a document and make yeah, it a thing? Exactly. Cool. So kind of keeping this in line with. This up here, so this this could be a character style. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So this will be. Yeah, 
yeah, we have more streams coming up uh, on editorial design, so make sure you uh, stay in tune. Uh, we have a couple shows after this one. Um, be going on until Thursday, so tune in tomorrow at the same time, 9, um, 9 a.m. Uh, Central or Pacific time. Um, it's going to be us. And then we have Stephanie Buckler at 11 a.m. Pacific time and Lucas at 1. So yeah, make sure you tune in. It should be fun. Jesse says, yes, more to editorial design. Mel is asking, do you always use the grid? Um, I do, but um, I think you can use it in different ways depending on the project. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I mean, for layout, I think it's nice though, just because it automatically establishes a relationship between the elements on a spread. And all the pages before and yeah. the pages following. Yeah, it just kind of creates mm -hmm. like a skeleton for the piece. Yeah, I would say definitely for editorial, um, you should uh, come up with the grid. And again, you can always break it, but it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a skeleton that would help you um, in the long run. Tom says, yes, loving the editorial designers. Go, Rachel. <laughs> it's a song by a reggae artist named How Ki. Something like that. So you have a song. All right. We should probably listen to that at some point. So right now I've kind of shown you go to the hidden characters, and that allows you to see where your spaces and paragraph breaks are. So I've kind of broken this one up so that I can kind of mess with these. Mm -hmm. So since the sentence is about large flurries falling, it makes sense to have the type maybe kind of are you using that. any specific setting to line out the type, or do you just? So all I'm doing is breaking it into different lines, mm -hmm. and then when you highlight the word, you can just left align, right okay. align, center it, um, and then it kind of creates That's some cool. movement. Let's see. Sometimes even kind of having unexpected spacing. And we're still in winter, right? That's why we're still using blue? Yes. Cool. Yeah, so Rachel created a color palette, and she's thinking of using a color for every season. So right now, we're still designing in the winter space, so we have that blue. Yeah, Eugene is saying it's not necessary to always have a grid. Yeah, you don't have to have a grid, but it helps. Right. You can always break it. It just, yeah, helps kind of maintain a sense of structure. Mm -hmm. Monique is asking, how soon can I watch the replay? I missed the beginning. Uh, as soon as we're done with this show, I think at 11, you should be able to watch it. Conversations around the um, Beyonce. <laughs> oh, Naomi, what's up? Naomi works at Design Ranch, which is the <laughs> awesome. studio I used to. Design Ranch loves you. <laughs> so here I'm just calling out the seasons and the color that was assigned to them, so it's a little visual cue. When you first get in here. Oh. 
So now I'm just kind of going back through what I've already done and seeing what I can add to it to make it more interesting or just mm -hmm. kind of like I was saying at the beginning, just you kind of get the bones and the pieces in there and then you just start breaking it, experimenting and yeah. adding more. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Daniel Campos from Peru is saying, I'm a UX UI designer, but I think editorial design in terms of composition can teach a lot about visual um, ergonomy. Great to be here seeing your work. Yeah, I think, you know, editorial okay. design is, you know, these days it's all like UX and yeah. UI. I mean, it translates into that because it's the similar format of laying out text and you know, with a little bit more functionality to it, but I think it's all, it all comes from the same place. I agree. It's kind of like when you start your foundation design classes, I feel like it's one mm -hmm. of the first things they teach you is kind of. Yeah, I'm sure everybody that goes you, through design training. Yeah. Have to... um, so here, I thought it'd be nice to just kind of add a big graphic circle um, to once again kind of nod to this idea of an Earth being one year mm -hmm. around the sun. So that's kind of yeah a way to measure time. That's kind of what this spread is doing. It's just visually breaking down what one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe be. you had a little inspiration too on that that you share in the beginning. So that's cool. Yeah, some of these cover studies, I guess. Any good resources for learning more about setting up grids properly? I think, you know, you can um, you can start with InDesign, you know, tutorials mm -hmm. yeah. or whatever, but there's also a lot of grid books yes. that have been created, like, for the longest time. Yeah, um, yeah. The ones uh, I'd recommend that one by uh, Joseph Mueller Brockman. Um, it's a book on grids. Uh, there's a bunch of books on grids. I don't know if you have a... There's one that I can't, I can't think of the name right now, but it has an orange cover. Yeah, that's the Mueller Brack. Okay, that's yeah. the one, okay. Um, and then once again, I, this is kind of a personal preference, but I like Hi. to optically align the type when it gets large. Okay, I think we have, uh, we're gonna pick a, a challenge winner. So All we're right. gonna look at some, some of summer the work recipes. we have. Maybe you can take three minutes to open all the links and after you can... So I'm gonna open all the links and we're gonna review all this stuff for you guys. Rachel, if you want to continue, it takes some time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, having some technical difficulties here. I think I got it. this with me. Okay. So we have some layouts here to review. Mango salsa. So we got obviously a mango color, uh, kind of an expressive type going on mm -hmm. uh, for the title. Spice up your summer. Some handwritten looking elements. Well, there's a uh, use of photography here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great job. And here we have a uh, this is cool. Yeah, this is cool. I'm not sure if they kind of illustrated, illustrated yeah. this. It's, uh, that would, that would be pretty quick for this window, but um, cool. Yeah, yeah very great good. job. Uh, nice illustration. Like the colors. Got some strawberry color. Yeah. Banana. Cool. Yep. Nice use of space here. How do how you broke it up? That's cool. Um, let's see. Let's jump on to the next one. 
Is there a way to tell um, the name of the person so we can? Um, so here we have another. Fruit junkie. Nice. Fruit junkie number one. That's fun photography. I like the, the layout, how she broke it up with the illustration here. Yeah, it's like a little mini notes layout. In the bottom. Cool. It's, it looks like a little spread. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the grid structure, I mm -hmm. would say, on this, which is nice. Cool. Is this still, let's see, is this still like a recipe? Not sure. But it looks like we have a banana color. Um, watermelon and strawberry. Cool. This looks more like a magazine spread. Yeah. It's so. looking, you're using some nice hierarchy though with the big fat B, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, I would try to maybe have a little bit more white space here. It looks a little bit like too much stuff, but it's a nice use of information. Uh, uh, this is a nice way to highlight all the ingredients, so that, that's cool. It's, the hierarchy seems to be working on this. Great job. Sangria sounds good <laughs> oh, always yeah. in the summertime. Yeah, that's a nice photo. Uh, okay, this one, <laughs> this looks like a recipe. Cool, that's nice really use of layout. I mm -hmm. like the ingredients separated. Um, she faded the image up to the top, gives yeah. a little bit of white space around the, all the type. Very nice. Using yeah. Adobe Stock, too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. So this is more minimal. Uh, this looks more like a cover for a recipe book. Yeah, I can see sorts. that. I like the little um, chef hat. Yeah, That's little cute. chef hat. Cute illustrations. Yeah, and a little bit of Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you have pages. Oh, there's multiple pages. Is there multiple okay, pages? There we go. Was uh, there multiple pages on the previous ones? No. Okay. All right. All right. Wow, you did a lot of work. Yeah. Wow. So we got a cover, an intro page. Uh, I'm assuming this is a spread, so it would kind of blend into the recipe. That's cool. Um, yeah. Nice use of type. Um, using hierarchy for the ingredients and a nice little detail to tie it back to the cover. Yeah. That's cool. That's nice. And last page. Oh. Nice. Cool. That's awesome. I like that. That's a lot of work for uh, oh, wow. all of this. So is Locked this... Up. Is this right? Okay. All right. So we got a book mocked up. Um, summer fancy. recipe. Cool. So it looks like we got, you know, in ingredients, directions. It's kind of nice to highlight it that way to... Yeah, I like the unconventional shape use. Right. It's nice. Breaks up the layout a little bit. Okay, jumping on to the next one. We got a full bleed photo with type. This one, for me, it's a little bit to read I think it would help maybe if you had uh, if you crop the image or maybe fill then fill it in with white maybe mm -hmm. I don't know what you think yeah we're just using something with a little more contrast mm -hmm. yeah just the body copy seems a little bit hard to read oh, is there more pages oh there's okay. more pages cool yeah I like how you have a full bleed image maybe you could even um, tone down the image in this section a bit to help you read, especially on this area with heavy copy. I would try to keep that as clean as possible so that you don't have problem reading it. But it's a nice layout. Yeah. And yeah, we have uh, two pages. Cool. All right, this one's very clean. Mm -hmm. I like the typeface choices. Yeah, those are nice. Um, nice, yeah. clean photography. And photography to as kind well, of accent yeah. The clean yeah, this is a nice type. detail here at the top, too. Mm -hmm. See if there's more pages to this. Yeah, cool. Okay. All right, this is very clean, very, uh, yeah, this is ready to go. Looks like it. I could use a little bit of color here to tie back to. The previous spread, like maybe yeah. a couple details like that would be nice to mm -hmm. bring in. 
Or even just having that stamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little bag. stamp somewhere. Uh, little touches of color here and there could could help, but I, I like the, the the minimal look. Mm -hmm. That's very easy to read and organized. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's nice. All right. There's a lot of submissions. Yeah, we have a few to go. We already went through this there. one. All right. Uh -huh. kind of okay. Mosaic styled <laughs> photo. Cool. Which is yeah. Cool. She's having fun experimenting with the photography. That's cool. Um, strawberry orange water. So obviously we got colors that tie it back into the photo, which is nice. The you can read the type. That's good. See, that's the only page here. Um, yeah, nice use of uh, color. Um, yeah, would you have anything to add to this? Yeah, I mean, I think. They've got some hierarchy established just mm -hmm. with the type sizes, which is nice. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much space in between this um, instructions, but yeah. overall. Might want to watch too, some of the lines aren't completely Yeah, maybe the weight, aligned or the weight, weight yeah, yeah. Uh, something, uh, maybe just or maybe play around with this section. Yeah. Off, I'm not sure. Okay, mango with salsa. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this. Yeah, it's a nice Colors, layout. Colors, yeah, kind of breaking it up a little bit. of the recipe. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, move on to the next one. So, okay, so I can't read this one, obviously, but it's a nice layout. I like how, I'm assuming this is the title of the recipe, so that's, oops. That's um, tying it, or that's kind of highlighting the photo in a nice way. And then you have all your instructions on the right. Um, looks like there's nice hierarchy going on. Um, and just using one color, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's nice. Let's see if there's more pages to this. Okay, cool. So it's kind of a series. All right, so the color ties into the photography, the recipe. This is more blueberry color. Cool. Nice. Nice layout. I like how we or Oops. how they flipped it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a nice little touch. Switching up the the layouts. Lots of mango salsa. Mango salsa was a favorite. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The photos are cool. Um, we got this sort of grid going on. I would maybe add a little bit more space uh, around this. Yeah. Um, yeah. The type could probably come down in size a little bit. Yeah. But it's a nice way to break it up. You get a nice title. Yeah, maybe the title of the dish could have a little more emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It seems right. like uh, these two are competing a little bit. Right. Um, so maybe yeah, just establish a little bit of hierarchy. Um, but uh, yeah, I like how even though you're using a lot of photography, it's not overcrowding the layout. Yeah. This kind of breaks it up a little bit. Let's see if there's more. Nope. That's it. Nice layout. Okay. Strawberry dessert pizza. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice, uh, nice layout on the type. Uh, we'll probably, again, keep some of the heavier copy areas a little bit more clean. Uh, you could even bring in a little color on that to tie it back to your photography that's in the back. And maybe... Mm -hmm. There's an area where you could show the actual color of the photo, because usually with recipes, the photos will kind of, you know, bring you in to right. try and, and, right. and make it. Um, so yeah, I would probably highlight the photo a little bit more too, to uh, give a little emphasis on the recipe and draw you in. I think also sometimes when there isn't a ton of content, it's nice to make the columns maybe a little more narrow mm -hmm. in size. Yeah, they're a little a little white. Yeah, you don't need to spread it all the way to here. Yeah, you could benefit from making them shorter a little bit. Yeah. Cool. And I believe those are it. Did we miss any? That's it. So, so yeah, now we, now we have to pick we a pick winner. One. Okay, so let's review So here. yeah, let's just go over them again. We have this. We have the illustrated, which um, can one of you guys confirm if this was illustrated yeah, was or stock? This is pretty, pretty good. 
Um, this is a nice layout. Yeah, the colors feel like summer, which is mm -hmm. nice. Oops, is there, oh, there's more here? I guess that's just one photo. Okay, that was a nice type layout here. Mm -hmm. I liked this one. This one was pretty cute. Yeah. I like how it, it starts to look like an actual book. Mm -hmm. Almost like a little zine. Mm -hmm. even. Yeah. Yeah, a little book mock up. Coconut. So this was the very clean type of graphic. Yeah, that's nice details. Mm -hmm. Infused water. Infused water. Mango wild salsa. This is the layout that yeah. switches. Nice. A little grid mm -hmm. mosaic pattern. A little strawberry. Sir Pizza, do you have a favorite or one that you want to pick? I would say my two favorites are this guy and the tacos the taco. al pastor. I just think there's some really nice details in there and you can tell that you know they've created a hierarchy but mm -hmm. also like you said adding some of those yeah you know other elements even like the dotted line down there and serving size it's nice oh did we miss i think that was it all right so we got all people are saying tacos al pastor yeah what is what do you guys what think the crowd tacos al pastor had a good vibe Strawberry banana milkshake used an original illustration, not stuck. Nice. Talk so, this yeah. one is beautiful. Sounds like this was not stuck. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, do you want to pick one? I'm going to have to go with the tacos al pastor. Tacos, okay. It's a good dish as well. All right, we have a winner here. Do we know who submitted this? We're looking for your name. Fanny. Congrats. Yeah, we're, we're still looking at the details, but congrats. Uh, yeah, nice work. Tackles help a store. For sound, the win. Sound really nice right now, too. <laughs> Lunchtime. Yeah. Is it Randy? Randy. Oh, Randy's our winner? Yeah, congrats, right. Randy. Yes, good job. All right. We can continue our work back to okay back to work so once again I'm just kind of going through what I have now and kind of making some adjustments um, tightening up some of this type some things so maybe this yeah, some people are congratulating Randy nice work Randy is it free creative cloud for a year yeah that? that's that's pretty good yeah that's nice Tacos, tacos, tacos. <laughs> Fanny, Fanny's into tacos. Everybody's mind is on food now. Yeah. Yeah, we're... <laughs> Where are you from, Randy? It's Taco Tuesday. Okay, so this one. Yep, so if you didn't win this time, make sure tomorrow we'll have another challenge uh, that you can submit to. Uh, 
will be around the same time as this one. So yeah, make sure you check out the challenge tomorrow. Um, yeah, join us. 9 a.m. Um, Pacific time. And there will be more challenges on the other designer segments later on, which you can still check out. <laughs> so once again, I have the content on here. Now I'm just kind of experimenting a little bit with placement of what them. it could be. Cool, so this one we have uh, the type going uh, sideways? Yes. Cool. Did you, were you able to fit all the copy on this spread or did it? This one also has overflow. Okay. So. Yeah, the strawberry illustration was nice. Um, some people are commenting on it. Oh yeah. So this, I'm just playing with different column widths mm -hmm. and just kind of breaking up one one piece of information in different ways. Mm -hmm. Editing type like this, it's it's tricky all the time. Yeah, especially when there's lots of yeah. little breaks. Um, yeah, editorial design takes a lot of work because you've got to edit every single bit of detail, which you kind of already went and edited yes. or formatted the, the, the copy in there. But yeah, all of that is... Um, takes a lot of time even if once you set your paragraph styles and character styles you still have to go and like manually um, add, assign a, a style to them right but luckily you've, you've done most of it <laughs> yes yeah and a lot of this too because I did want to call out each date you can't really just highlight everything and apply a style. <laughs> Fanny's saying, maybe it's my literature degree, but I'm loving all that text. <laughs> and more Taco Tuesday comments. <laughs> and Maya says you're doing a great job of making a lot of text look interesting thank you that is the goal <laughs> that's all we have to play with just type and color Delayed flight to vacation is like dropping your ice cream for the first thing. Yep, I agree with that. <laughs> that was, of course, after a delay. Nice. Uh, Where were you going? I think that was to New York. Before you moved? Yeah, yeah, so that oh. was kind of scouting the city last year. All right. 
seeing if I liked it. Yeah, so Rachel just moved uh, to New York from Kansas. Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri. Cool. So yeah, very new. Been there for about a month. So this I just thought it might be interesting to layer some type. And you're using the pink that you selected in the beginning for which season? This is spring. Spring. Cool. So we're back into spring and I'm kind Seriously. of wanting this pink to maybe go a little bit more orange. So I'm gonna tweak that. Okay, we have one more minute. Um, thank you guys for joining. Make sure you yes, thank join you. us again tomorrow. We'll be continuing this scene exploration. Um, more editorial design coming up uh, later on. Uh, we have other guests. Uh, this is Rachel Roth uh, from New York, and I am Javier Garcia here, designer from San Francisco. Thank you guys for, for joining. Yes, again. thank you. Hopefully, be back with you all tomorrow. Yeah, and we're creating a little scene uh, from writings from uh, Rachel. So uh, we're editing all the copy, fitting it into a 16 page typographic. Explorative. No, no photography. Zine. Yep, make sure you join us and join the challenges, join the chat, um, and make sure you watch the next segment, uh, which should be pretty fun. More editorial design. Stay tuned.